Well, Lucian, thank you for an inspirational talk. And now, um, I'm, it's my great pleasure to welcome Charlie Maddock. I met Charlie and I asked him, what shall I say about you? And he said, tell them that Charlie is lucky to be alive. Charlie graduated from Brown University in 2004 with a degree in history. And a month later, his life was changed by being hit by a taxi cab while he was crossing a street in Manhattan. He's going to tell you something of that journey. He's now an investment manager for Brown Brothers Harriman & Co. And two years ago, he set up the Charlie Maddock Foundation. He's here today to tell us about his journey and what that means for all of us in terms of health. I welcome Charlie Maddock to the stage to tell us more of his journey. Charlie, welcome. Cheers. <clears throat> Thank you uh, very much for that. And first, just a, a, a big thanks to uh, the co-founders of One Young World, our incredible counselors, and perhaps most importantly, to all of you extraordinary delegates uh, for making the past few days just an absolutely phenomenal experience. The resolution we're talking about mentions spreading information about and providing good access to health care. Uh, which has, has certainly become uh, the main focus of my life uh, since graduating from college. At my graduation from Brown University, I, I remember being very excited, albeit a bit nervous, but more than anything else, I was, I was eager to begin my life in the quote-unquote real world. I had just spent four years studying in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm originally from just north of Miami, Florida, and I was on my way uh, to start my first job in Boston, Massachusetts. So it was, it was really just by chance, just by chance that my accident happened to occur in Manhattan. It was just by chance that I ended up being taken to, to the best hospital in New York City. And it was just by chance that when I arrived there, the physician who was on call to see me just happened to be the director of the neurological surgery residency program at that hospital. Hours before, uh, I had been on my way to meet some friends just past midnight when uh, a taxi cab hit me while crossing the street. Uh, the impact shattered my left pelvis before I flipped up over the hood and crashed headfirst through the windshield, breaking my jaw on the glass before falling to the ground. Although I sustained many physical injuries that night that would require months of rehabilitation, by far the most serious injury I suffered was the severe trauma to my brain. A few hours after my accident, Dr. Howard Rena was ready to perform the decompressive hemicraniectomy on my skull to remove half of it and allow my brain room to swell. I spent almost two weeks in a coma after uh, that first surgery, naturally at first, and then drug-induced in order to monitor my brain swelling. Months later, when I was finally able to begin outpatient uh, rehabilitation, I, I remember uh, being very frustrated, and more than anything else, I, I, was, I was just embarrassed. You see, I, I, I could barely get out of bed. And, and when I did get out of bed, I had to put on a helmet because at that point I only had half of a skull. Due in part to this anxiety, I was losing my temper frequently with family and close friends, causing them to really worry whether or not I'd ever be completely healed. Although I was able to start work about seven months after my accident, it took a full year and a half to finally feel strong, happy, and, and just like my old self again. Americans have been inundated with stories about traumatic brain injury or TBI, and, and we, we read and we hear scary statistics, like 50,000 Americans will die every year as a result of a traumatic brain injury. And on top of that, another 80,000 will have to learn to cope and live with a lifelong loss of function. So as such, there are currently about 5.5 million Americans living with a permanent Traumatic brain injury related disability and, and suffice it to say that it only gets worse in other countries around the world. So, so what if, right? What if I hadn't been in New York City? 
or, or forget that. What if I hadn't been taken to the best hospital in Manhattan? Or what's more, what if I hadn't been seen so quickly by such a prominent neurosurgeon? What then? You know, would I even be here? The Charles Baddock Foundation has been established to focus on the education of healthcare providers in administering critical care to victims of traumatic brain injury. To carry out these activities, the board of directors nominated Dr. Howard Rena, the neurosurgeon who saved my life, to serve as the chairman of our medical advisory board, which will work in conjunction, does work in conjunction, uh, with the board of directors to help use funds raised to help promote and spur neurologic education and innovation. Dr. Rena has recruited eight of the United States' top neurosurgeons to sit on his medical advisory board with him, spanning the entire country from New York to Texas and out to California. We all look forward to a future where many more lives will be saved and far fewer will have to suffer disability regardless of where their accident might happen. The foundation is also focused on, on creating a, a support network and, and resource online for victims of, of brain injury, which is really a, a product of my own recovery. Uh, originally, as I mentioned, I, I didn't want to mention that I, that I had a brain injury. I, I didn't want to believe it. But months into my recovery, I, I started to really understand and, and, and really basically be honest with myself that it had happened to me. And then I found myself desperate to talk to someone else who might have experienced the same thing. I, I had an incredible support network of, of my family and my friends, but thank God they couldn't understand. They couldn't understand the emotional and physical pain that I was going through. We've, we've used uh, social networking uh, very well and, and been able to reach out and, and connect brain injury victims around the world, and certainly in the United States, we've really been able to help these people get very tangibly involved in the foundation. Uh, and, and these are, are victims that range from all ages, from all across the country that, that are involved in different things, from a, a young woman who's an undergraduate student at Columbia University in New York City, to a 40-year-old construction worker in Dallas, Texas, uh, to a uh, New York State firefighter. <clears throat> what started is, is really just a, a compelling idea a few years ago, has grown into a grassroots public charity, has raised over $250,000, has overseen, fully funded, and, and seen a, uh, a study that was a medical study focused on cerebrospinal fluid drainage after a traumatic brain or spinal cord injury, has collaborated with another much larger foundation, to try to produce an algorithm for use in the guidelines of how to treat traumatic brain injury on every country across the planet. And as I mentioned, we've already created this, this online support network as well. We have no staff, it's, it's all volunteers, and because of it, we have little to, to no overhead. But perhaps most importantly, we've already started to accomplish our goals. I was thinking this morning, and I was trying to think of what the most exciting part about this is for me. And as I got to thinking about it, I realized that what excites me most about the foundation is what excites me most about all of the extraordinary work that each and every single one of you in this room are doing. And that's very simply, ladies and gentlemen, that we have only just begun to get to work. Thank you all so much.